What is up, IF Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna talk about the four main people who should not do intermittent fasting. I'm gonna talk about all four people in this group and explain why they should not do intermittent fasting and why it can be potentially harmful if they decide to do intermittent fasting. We're gonna go ahead and break that down in this video. Stay tuned. jumping into this video the first group that I want to touch on is eating disorder now eating disorder is a psychological disease It's a psychological impairment in which there's body dysmorphia there's the distortion of body image where they think that they're overweight for example when they're anorexic they think that they're overweight even with uh, bulimia nervosa and anorexia nervosa they think that they're overweight but in reality they are perfectly fine or actually tend to be underweight. Uh, so they are excessively trying to do energy expenditure while excessively trying to reduce energy intake. If you're anorexic, you completely try to avoid eating as much as possible and you excessively try to exercise so that you can increase energy burn so you're constantly at severe caloric restriction and this is because of the body dysmorphia the distortion of your own body image and your fear of gaining any weight at all and with bulimia it's where you binge eat a lot of food then you purge they call this purging where you you try to take all of those calories back out by vomiting by regurgitating your food so that fear can be exaggerated or exacerbated by doing intermittent fasting intermittent fasting if you've if you've gone through therapy if you've gone through psychological therapy and has put yourself in a better position introducing intermittent fasting can elicit a triggering of that experience or those feelings that can bring you back to that level now keep in mind that intermittent fasting in and of itself is control it isn't uh, sporadic and it isn't something that you're just doing because of body dysmorphia or a distorted body image yes you may want to lose some weight or you just want to be healthy but you're controlling this aspect and you're eating at specific times to elicit the benefits of intermittent fasting but if you're prone to to eating disorders, especially that of anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa, you might want to stay clear of utilizing intermittent fasting because like I said, intermittent fasting may re-trigger those feelings, those psychological feelings that you had when you were going through that process. The next group of people that should not do intermittent fasting are pregnant women. And I will lump in everything with pregnant women, with newborn baby, with children, it'll all be kind of lumped in together. And the reason you don't want to do this is because, believe it or not, intermittent fasting has a biological, uh, strategical element to it. It's about, of course, putting your body in a hormonal state that's shifting and burning body fat and, and adding beneficial things like norepinephrine, epinephrine, uh, IGF-1 increase, reduction in oxidative stress. So those things are happening. Those are all clicking when you're doing intermittent fasting. But one thing that intermittent fasting uh, works on is the autophagy element. And autophagy is actually built on the malnutrition of not eating so it's like an acute malnutrition and that small malnutrition is what's activating the cells to clean out your body by eating itself and eating the negative the bad cells and making itself stronger and then reproducing cleaner stronger cells but the autophagy element comes from malnutrition however in a developmental stage where you have a fetus that needs to get consistent nutrients in their body to ensure that you're developing your baby in a correct way and making sure that it is getting all of the nutrition at a consistent clip. That is why intermittent fasting should not be done by anyone who is pregnant. And then of course, once the baby is born, if you're breastfeeding the baby, even at that point, you should still not be intermittent fasting because the nutrition that you have in your body is being transferred to the baby. So you wanna still have that high level of nutrition. And of course, as a baby, they need to be eating at a very consistent level because they are developing. They're not like an adult who already has these things already set in their bodies and they could afford to strategically be in this 
acute malnutrition state where once they start eating, they remove that. But during that process, they are allowing things like autophagy to take place. And of course, children, children are still developing as well. It's only when you become an adult that you can be confident that you've passed that crucial developmental stage. So consistent nutrition is important for children, babies, and pregnant women. Now, the third group of people who should not do intermittent fasting, people who have type 1 diabetes and let me talk a little bit about this type 1 diabetes is when your pancreas cannot produce insulin and insulin is what allows it's the gateway it's the key that opens up the cells to allow it to move into the cells and out of the bloodstream effectively utilizing glucose for energy so after gluconeogenesis when your carbs are broken down and turned into glucose and you have all of this glucose moving through your bloodstream usually at this point if you're not a type when diabetic your insulin will start to release it'll connect to other cells and then it unlocks the ability for it to move into a different location so it takes a lot of the glucose and moves it so it can give you energy so that it can provide energy to your body if this doesn't happen and you are a type 1 diabetic what ends up happening is that your body never actually uses glucose for energy so then you end up actually always utilizing body fat for energy and always being in a ketosis state but your blood sugar levels are still very very high so you're in this very very dangerous state where you have high ketones and high blood sugar and if you're in this state for too long what ends up happening is you have a thing called ketoacidosis and this tends to happen when you're in a ketogenic state and have high blood sugar at the same time so the ketones actually become acidic and can make you very ill and potentially you can die from this as well so you want to always be very very careful of course if you're diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic you should be getting insulin from your doctor prescribed to you by your doctor so that you can actually have insulin in your body to connect to the cells to open up the cells and have you use the energy from carbohydrates or from the glucose breakdown but your diet has to be specified and you have to eat at certain times so that you can keep your blood sugar levels normal and based on your condition your doctor will probably let you know what type of diet and what type of eating schedule you should have and because of this doing intermittent fasting may throw a wrench into all of that to keep you as healthy as possible believe me you don't want to try to get the health benefits of intermittent fasting but at the same time be so detrimental to yourself in terms of your specific diagnosis what you currently have that can actually kill you it'll be counterproductive so you want to make sure that you are safe it isn't to say that it's 100% that you shouldn't do it but if it doesn't fit within the dieting and the protocol of what you need for your own health with type 1 diabetes then I would recommend you not do intermittent fasting and the fourth group of people that should not do intermittent fasting are those who do not want to do intermittent fasting if you don't want to do intermittent fasting you don't have to do intermittent fasting intermittent fasting has its health benefits regardless of weight loss yes and intermittent fasting assists with weight loss but the most important thing will always be how long you can stick to any protocol any eating regimen uh, how long can you stick to it can you do it for the rest of your life and if you see that intermittent fasting is something that you absolutely despise and you cannot do it and you've figured out other ways to lose weight and remain healthy and keep your cardiovascular health up by exercising and doing all these different things if you've done that and you don't want to do intermittent fasting and you don't care to have the autophagy happen and, and all these different metabolic switchovers that happen when you're fasting if you don't care for those things if weight loss is already under your control and you don't care about weight loss with intermittent fasting then you don't have to do it it's all about what you want to do intermittent fasting can be for everyone minus those people that i've just mentioned but it's still something that is very personal to you if it's something that doesn't work for you if it's something that you can't fit into your lifestyle and if it's something that you just don't want to do then you don't have to do it you can go ahead and do something else or keep on doing what works for you and that's it those are the four groups of people that should not do intermittent fasting and of course i want to thank my patrons for my patreon and i'm going to go ahead and put their names right up